Half bread, chaos? What is the difference between level and love in Deltarune? Oh boy. Before we get started, spoilers for Undertale in Deltarune. Don't hassle people for using text to speech, and be nice to your fellow theorists when you disagree in the comments. The original Undertale was a subversive masterpiece, which utilized the common assumptions about RPG mechanics to play with the player's expectations, by framing the act of winning battles to level up, as acts of unnecessary violence that stain the soul. Although we are told that LV stands for love, very early on, it is done in the context of a seemingly harmless tutorial flower, trying to lull the player into a false sense of security, and after this cutscene, the connection between love and level is never made again, until the player reaches the judgment hall, at which point it is used to sucker punch the player with the revelation that love describes your level of violence, not kindness. That what we've really been gaining through violence is execution points and that although violence may feel easier at first, and mercy may, at times, feel more punishing, it is that willingness to extend a little kindness, and work together in solidarity with strangers, that is the true key to change, and ultimately, freedom. It should be noted that self-defense and fighting, in general, is not counted as violence in either game. As in Undertale, violence is only framed as such if it results in a death. While in Deltarune, well, things start to get a lot more complicated, because while Undertale uses the terms love and level interchangeably, they are absolutely treated as the same variable, which you can easily see in your saves config file right below your name and your fun value. However, if you try to open the corresponding config file in Deltarune, that's when things start to get weird. Love 1 and Level 1? Why would Toby need to track both of these things as separate variables? Are they not the same thing? This question sounded so easy to answer, but then I cracked open the code, and next thing I knew, an entire week had passed and my desktop was so cluttered with open save files that I had to start overlaying them in Photoshop just to keep track of them all. So, let's start with the easy part first. Love is the variable that is used in the light world. In the code, the variable for it is abbreviated to LLV, also known as your light world level. And as far as I can tell, the code that controls how you level up in the light world is literally copy-pasted directly from Undertale, even though there is no way to increase your EXP in the light world as of the time of writing this. At the moment, it's hard to say if Toby has placed this here purely for aesthetic purposes, to make the light world feel more authentic to Undertale, or if he actually plans to use this to track our morally questionable behavior in the light world separately from the dark world. So, if this love variable is your light world level, then does that make this LV variable your dark world level? At first, I assumed the answer was yes, and I figured the easiest way to confirm this would be to open up a save file from a normal root, then open up a save file from the weird, aka the snow grave root, and thus use the difference in level between the two files to prove a correlation. But, what's this? The number is still 1. But in the game, the save point says I'm at level 2. And yet for some reason, my stats place my characters at level 3? What in the heck is going on here? Well, apparently, as it turns out, save points don't actually display your level, they just display the current chapter. So in chapter 1, save points will read LV1, and in chapter 2, they will read LV2. Unless you erase a previous save file, in which case the empty save file will display LV0 in Chapter 1 and LV2 in Chapter 2. Is this a glitch with the way the save files display in Chapter 2? Or could it be that the existence of the pre-made save file means our empty save is actually technically saved at Chapter 2? Hum. To make matters even more confusing, deleting your save data actually sets the empty save file to have a love of zero and a level of zero. And as far as I can tell, this is the only way to change these two numbers to something other than a one. Although, for some reason, copying old save data over an empty file only overwrites the level and not the love? Is this some sort of philosophical statement about our mass-produced save files being the product of a cold, unfeeling machine? or a glitch that is so minor and unimportant, Toby literally didn't notice because it overwrites itself anyway the moment you use an actual save point? I have no idea. And trying to answer this question took so much of my time, I had to split it into two videos. So if you are wondering why I made a super short video two weeks ago about Chris having three save files, that? That is what happened. 
So if this is not your actual level, and this is also not your actual level, then does that mean the status screen in the dark world is the only way to check our actual level? Well, let's see. Opening up the code for this segment, we can see that the variable which displays your power's level is false LV or false level. So, um, probably not, right? Strangely, this variable starts at level 1 for chapter 1, jumps to 2 for chapter 2, but then it increases again to level 3 before chapter 2 is completed, the moment after you see the dark fountain. Unless it's Noel, in which case the powers starter at level 1, then updates her to be the same level as the rest of the party, the moment her title changes. But if anything, this seems to be tracking the number of dark fountains you've sealed. Which does correlate with your powers somewhat, as your HP, attack, and magic, all rise whenever you seal a fountain. So, ironically, this is actually the only variable labeled, level, that actually, accurately, reflects your party's power. And he called it, false level. So, clearly, there has to be a variable somewhere that's tracking our actual level, right? Okay, so let's back up a second. Because I believe when most people ask, what level am I in Deltarune? What they're actually asking can be split into two questions. Question 1. How evil am I? And question 2. How strong am I? If the level we see in save points, stat menus, and save files has no relation to either of those questions, that would make it a red herring, right? So, instead of focusing on level and love, let's instead crack open the game's flags and see what happens when we violence an enemy. Checking various save files, we can see quite clearly that your EXP and level remain static across all runs. So, clearly, when you violence an enemy, even if you use Snowgrave to kill them, no EXP is gained. Instead of a binary mercy or kill system, it seems like Toby tracks all of our enemy interactions through eight different flags. Flag 43 tracks how many times Susie has scared away an enemy in Chapter 1. Flag 44 is our total kills and tracks the number of enemies that have taken fatal damage, which, as of right now, includes both Peepis and enemies that have been snowgraved. Flags 45 and 925 track the number of enemies we've frozen with Ice Shock, while Flag 926 tracks how many encounters we have ended with nothing but Ice Shock. And most interesting is Flag 40, which tracks how many enemies have either fled due to violence or have died from taking fatal damage. Freezing enemies has no impact on this flag, so basically, it seems like this flag seems to be tracking our intended number of kills, instead of our actual number of kills. There are also two mercy flags, in the forms of flag 41, which tracks the number of enemies we have spared, and flag 42, which tracks the number of enemies we have pacified. So, overall here, it seems like instead of one obvious, evilness variable, Toby is taking a more dynamic approach to morality by examining all of our decisions, no matter how small. And much like in real life, we can't know for sure which decisions will have consequences, nor what the consequences will be. Toby might choose to punish all violence using Flag 40, or maybe he'll only punish freezes and fatalities. It's really not clear. If I might go out on a limb though, I personally believe that this is going to end up being a subversion of the idea that your choices don't matter, as it would seem that by tracking our every decision, no matter how small, Toby has laid the groundwork to create a game in which every choice we make has the potential to have these huge rippling consequences later down the line. So thinking of things in terms of what our level and love might be, could be us missing the forest for the trees. So that's one mystery basically resolved. Our choices do matter. But what about the other major theme found in the violence route? When we kill, are we really getting stronger? To find out, I started by cracking open the battle controller script. Here we can see that any time a battle ends, the game checks flag 63, and if that flag is set to 1, you become stronger, and it runs the level up script. This script raises all of the character's HP and attack, as well as the magic stat of every party member who isn't Chris. So, yes, it does appear that leveling up does make you stronger. One thing that's very strange though, is that making Noel stronger also raises the stats of Chris, Susie, and Ralse, even when the latter are not actually in your party. Could this be implying that Chris, Susie, and Ralse all share the same level as the player's soul, while Noel is not yet an official member of the team? Or, is this just so that Toby can give Noel different stats, perhaps as some future boss battle, similar to the one between the Fun Gang and the Dark Fun Gang? 
I have no idea, but the game definitely tracks our level with flag 65 and Noel's level with flag 919, so if you really want to find the flag that tracks the number of times we have leveled up, I'd say this is the closest we're going to get. However, while I was testing this flag, I noticed something odd. You don't level up every time you violence a monster, nor do you level up from EXP. Through extensive testing, I have found that wait. Did I just gain the ability to recruit previously lost recruits by casting Snowgrave? Oh. Okay, so, you know how sometimes if you hurt a recruit, they become lost? The Spamton save editor doesn't disambiguate between lost and recruited. Which means if you plug a save file into it, all your lost enemies will become recruits. Whoopsie. Looking instead at the script, it seems like the only time you are meant to level up is when you cause an enemy to become lost when it could have been recruited, either through violence, murder, or freezing. This is in line with Ral Say's Cyberpedia entry, which claims that breaking bonds, not violence, is what can cause us to grow stronger. Or at least, that's what I thought until I tried to grab footage for this part of the video that wasn't tainted by the spammed and save editor, and then I noticed that, oh, hey, that's weird. I just grew stronger from two wear wire encounters back to back. That's odd. If they're lost, I should not be getting stronger, should I? What's that? You think recruitable means able to be recruited? Silly half bread. Recruitable is an obscure variable that's only called upon for these five monsters. What's that? You wanna know why Spamton doesn't cause you to gain a level if he's not one of these exceptions? Don't worry about it. The point is, if you violence or freeze an enemy that isn't Birdly, Queen, Spamton, Sweet Cap and Cakes, or one of the Peepis, you won't gain a level, excuse me? How? Well, remember how earlier I said, any time a battle ends, the game checks flag 63? That flag is set in the defeat run script, which is the part of the code that checks how you defeated an enemy. Here, we can see that when we freeze an enemy, the game checks if the enemy was recruitable when it was defeated, so it can set global flag 63 to 1 if it was, and leave it at 0 if it wasn't. But, whoever coded this, forgot to put their braces around this part. Braces are basically the thing that specify which condition should be triggered by an if statement. So, instead of checking if an enemy is recruitable, and then setting the flag if they are, it just kind of sets flag 63 to 1 every time an enemy is frozen, regardless of if it was a recruit or not. Which means, if we hack Noel into the room with the Peepis, we could hypothetically grind these forever, until our power maxes out. This is a weirdly obvious bug, so why hasn't Toby fixed it yet? Well, two theories. Theory 1. No one has noticed yet. Or, Theory 2. It's Noel's fault. You see, early on, one of the first things people noticed about the weird root was that when you fight Birdly with the Thorn Ring equipped, it reduces Noel's health down to 55, which in Roman numerals would translate to LV, which we all know from Undertale as love. Since the weird root has a reputation as being the root with the highest level of violence, this makes for an amazing, if probably unintentional, callback. As it stands now, we become stronger when we violence an enemy. Noelle can only become stronger if she's in the party when it happens, and these levels are tracked secretly deep within flags 65 and 919 of your game files. While the love displayed as our light world level, as of the time of writing this, never changes except to reset to zero when a file is erased. Save points do not display our LV, but instead display our current chapter. And finally, powers start at 1 and increases every time we seal a fountain. Special thanks to our cat tier patron, Sam Deluxe, for the topic, because I have been wondering about this one for so long. Thank you as well to Spacecore, Molly Stars, Sergio, and all of you for your continued support and patience. And now, before we go, I have one final question for you all. We already know that powers aren't a reliable tracker of our level, but it is a reliable tracker for our powers, as it changes Noel from Snowcaster to Frostmancer to Ice Trancer in the Weird Root. Said Root also changes Chris from Bed Inspector or Tactician to Leader. But you know, there is actually one other time we see this title, and that is when Ral Say first joins the party at the start of Chapter 1. Coincidence? Or foreshadowing? 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more hyperlink blocked.